What is the holy grail for continuous integration and continuous delivery? Two friends of mine, one AWS community builder and one AWS hero, asked me today how to build the perfect CICD pipeline and how to combine that with your branching strategy and your continuous integration strategy. So I said, let's record something um, so I can share my best tips and uh, the, the best uh, things that I've read about this in the past few weeks. But before we go there, let's have a look at what the holy grail actually is. So, so what is the holy grail? It's obviously not the mysterious grail that Percival has been uh, searching for. Um, it is, in our case, uh, maybe something that uh, looks like a perfect continuous integration and continuous deployment implementation. And as you can see up here, I've already opened up um, a bunch of um, websites that I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to start with an article that uh, Martin Fowler wrote, um, and uh, he updated it just a few days ago, uh, focused on uh, how do we really do continuous integration? Why do we do it? And why is it important? The main thing here in this article, from my perspective, is really that you need to automate everything that you do. Um, you need to push all of your stuff to the mainline every day. And this has some implications uh, on how you do act, uh, how you actually uh, develop your software, because you also need to include something like feature toggles. Um, he uh, explains this over here. Um, and let's start from the beginning, right? Uh, you um, have something, uh, you, you pull your source code from a central repository into your local environment, then you actually develop on it and work on it. At the same time, your teammates update the central repository. So um, you will then uh, need to pull in the stuff when you're ready with developing a feature, pull in the stuff that your teammates did. Uh, you will integrate that locally and check if the tests that you actually executed are green. And after you did that, you will push the the, the, your changes to the central repository. And now this will automatically trigger a pipeline uh, and will build the actual software that you are working on. And ideally, um, now everything will be working as expected because you have already tested things locally and uh, your colleagues will now pick up the new work from you. Of course, this is all simplified, but I would highly encourage you to read this article in all of his length if you want to, if you have time and if you're interested in this topic. Um, and, I, and I think really that this is um, very well written uh, to explain how continuous integration actually works and how this behaves. This is one of the articles that I always um, send to people, right? So uh, then uh, there is uh, something very cool that Amazon doesn't really talk about a, a lot, right? But it's called the Amazon Builders Library. Uh, and there's three articles that together, uh, for me at least, explain how AWS does uh, deployments, continuous integration and development uh, in an automated way. So uh, the first one is from Mark Mansour. Uh, it talks about uh, continuous improvements in software automation. I will add the link to the uh, to the notes as well, um, and it explains a little bit how uh, the pipelines at AWS are being implemented. So then uh, we have uh, one of the uh, one of the very detailed ones uh, where uh, Claire Ligori explains uh, how deployments are done in all of the different AWS regions. Um, it also explains uh, on the way that you integrate integration tests um, into the deployment process. So then another one is um, if you have a continuous deployment and continuous delivery pipeline, uh, you should ensure that if ever anything goes wrong, you will need to roll back automatically. Uh, and an article from Sandeep uh, explains this also uh, in very details on how Am Amazon implements that internally, right? Um, with uh, some examples as well that uh, you can then uh, also read and try out later. And then last but not least, and this was one of the hidden gems of reInvent 2022, um, which is where Claire Ligor explains um, how uh, the CICD pipeline takes automated decisions on the way to uh, your production environment. Uh, it also emphasizes trunk-based development in the same way that uh, Martin Fowler does. Uh, so I really think that this explains very well uh, on how to implement a state-of-the-art development process uh, and making sure that uh, the software that your developers build uh, gets safely to your production environments through this pipeline.
not every project that you do is as complicated as a multi-region rollout at AWS, uh, but you can apply these concepts in a much smaller scale uh, for your own projects. And this will, I think, really change the way that you look at uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, something that is kind of uh, not really detailed here is the concept of feature flaggings uh, and how to uh, actually use them. Uh, there is other articles that talk about that, um, but I have not uh, really looked at those uh, lately, but I would really encourage you to have a look on those. So last but not least, I'm going to uh, bring up the channel from uh, Dave Furley, uh, which is also uh, explaining a lot of details around continuous delivery and the way that you do Hi, that. And this I'm is Dave a channel Farley, that actually uh, also watching myself and learning from that um, just uh, yeah uh, so keep yourself uh, up to speed with continuous integration and continuous deployment and continuous delivery and i think that this is really uh, important uh, if you want to be in this space you should read those uh, four articles or five articles that i was just mentioning uh, and uh, if you have any feedback or advice on other articles that i that might be helpful for people to consume please put them in the comments and yeah, let me know um, if this was helpful for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.